Hey, welcome to For This Story. Thank you so much for electing us as Comptroller of District 2 in Wyoming. We're very proud to be the first podcast to be in public office. Uh, I'm Blue Marvel, a.k.a. Adam Brescher. Um... <laughs> and I'm Avery. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for electing us. It's incredible to know that two idiots on the internet can hold public yeah. office uh, over I mean, Discord. especially because we, we ran our entire... Uh, <laughs> Our entire campaign on the idea of free sex robots for everyone, but only if they sing Pavarotti songs. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's an incredible platform. Never been done before. Yeah. Um, we didn't think it would get off the ground at all, but we actually received over $70 million yeah. in donations. Thanks a lot, George Soros. <laughs> <laughs> George Soros and one other person who gave us yeah. one dollar. His name <laughs> was Albert Einstein. No relation. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, an American hero. Technically, kind of. <laughs> My favorite president, to be honest. So glad we put him on the $200 bill. Uh, <laughs> how was your oh week? Oh, God. Uh, my week was awesome. Actually, I mean, like, it's all right, you know, did the stuff, did the thing. I watched a, uh, mm-hmm. a movie, because um, that's what I do with a lot of my... I actually saw a couple. Um, there was one... Uh, that I watched earlier this week. It was called Summer of 84. Uh, I, I, it's a Shutter ex- exclusive. Uh, I am a really big proponent of the streaming platform Shutter. It's fucking sick. Can you it's please, all horror movies. Please but say that like so, you're being paid a little bit more. <laughs> I, I'm I, on it. Yeah, I'm not being paid. Shutter, give me money. I don't know, but like for real, they do like original stuff, kind of like Netflix does, uh, and they also do TV sh- or TV series or whatever you want to call them, um, and it's really good. This movie is called Summer of '84. It's a uh, it's about like these kids in 1984 who uh, think that their next door neighbor is a serial killer, and Remember it's pretty good. Shia LaBeouf uh, and Disturbia. Wasn't that the plot of that movie? Yeah, very yeah. similar to that. Except it's like it's it's like Stranger Things and Disturbia at the same time. Someone kill me. Uh, uh. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. Like <laughs> I would recommend that. I also watched another movie. This is an older one. I had never seen it or heard of it before. It came out in like ninety eight or ninety nine. The movie was called Eight Millimeter. It starred Nicolas what Cage. Uh, and uh, it was about this guy who gets contacted. He's like a private investigator. Uh, and he gets contacted by this, this really wealthy family after some dude who is in the family dies. And they go through his belongings and they find this like film reel that has the snuff tape Ooh. on it. Right. About these people like raping and murdering this this girl. And they, they, it doesn't get too graphic. You don't see too much. So don't worry about that if, you, if that's going to trigger you. But uh, D- Nicolas Cage in classic fashion playing himself goes and investigates this and he goes like too far down the rabbit hole and gets kind of caught up in the scuzzy snuff film underworld. It's pretty cool. I think Joaquin Phoenix is in it actually as well. So there's a little bit of trivia for you. Um, Those two in a movie together? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, right? I'm pretty sure it was Joaquin Phoenix. Now I have to look it up um, because I'm pretty sure it was. Eight oh no no no! Millimeter. You're thinking it was a walking phoenix, like the the mythical beast. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Literally in a movie that I watched, Joaquin Phoenix. I'm pretty sure it was him. Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. So it's a it's worthwhile to uh, check it out, I guess. Might as well, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, yeah. Did you watch anything cool other than The Good Place, which we yeah, are we going to get, get into? into. Um, I started trying to watch the the like. Uh, the new Sabrina the Teenage Witch show on Netflix and almost cr- I did too I, I almost it. cringed myself out of existence in the first episode <laughs> yeah it's pretty cringy I couldn't really get far I wasn't even really people paying talking, attention I was playing a video game and I was like I'll put this on people are talking very highly of it but I'm just like ooh I, I can't this is oh my skin's crawling it's not yeah it's not my kind of style either it's interesting I was kind. Of, I, honestly, I thought you were gonna be. You would kind of like it. <laughs> Is that yeah, rude? You know I, 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 <laughs> I thought it was I kind of your thing. Turning in my badge and my gun. <laughs> Why do you have a gun at this podcast? Uh, your podcast <laughs> gun <laughs> shoots bad jokes. I didn't get one of those. <laughs> 
Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. I didn't really like Sabrina so far. I've only gotten like two episodes in before you I got changed that it. Far, I got so maybe seven I didn't minutes get into the first episode. Went, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. It's pretty. It's pretty cringy. It reminds me of like the same like feel as Twilight, except they try to make it like funnier, and a lot of it is just kind of falling flat yeah. for me. So it's. It's a little not my thing. And by a little not my thing, I mean it's just really not, not my thing. I might give it a, another it shot. It might be amazing. Though people yeah. roast us alive if we... Yeah. yeah that might, honestly, I really think it's just a subjectivity thing. I don't think it's necessarily bad. It might be. Um, like, at least from what I could glean from it. Yeah, I mean, it could just be bad. Maybe we're just the only two enlightened, enlightened well, people on know. Earth. Speaking <laughs> of enlightenment... <laughs> Whoa! Did hey, you good see that? Man. Holy like shit! It. Yeah, let's, uh, let's roll that was one back. Incredible. Speaking of enlightenment, uh, we watched a show about heaven <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, we watched The Good Place, the first four episodes of The Good yeah. Place. This was a little bit of an experiment. Uh, Asher knows that I'm not partial to television show, vision shows. Don't really have the patience for them, mm. just in general. I like how movies are tightly wrapped up with a bow. Everything's neat, self-contained. I find that TV shows tend to be perpetuated for the purpose of like keeping the the show going. You know, it just and it kind of eventually loses yeah. steam. I found well, with a lot I, of shows. Yeah, this one I, mean, I liked. I, I, I thought it was pretty cute. On the opposite end of the spectrum, where I think that the tight little bow, bow that uh, movies tend to put on things really gets rid of a lot of characterization, uh, and you know, the plot tends to have more holes than I like. Uh, in a well fleshed out TV show, mm. you don't really have those problems. You know, I, I, I use Daredevil a lot as an example, but you get to the end of the season of Daredevil, you're like, yeah, you know, I don't have any questions. Uh, there was a full arc, and I know exactly who all these characters are, and I have no, I have no questions. I like. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. a good way of putting it. That is a good thing that you you bring up a great point. Um, fitting an entire story, characterization, motivations for the characters, and you know, having a plot and, you know, the whole arc is often pretty difficult to fit into an hour, 30 minutes, yeah. two hours. Which is why it's always um, awesome when they do. So, like, tr- like when I watch a movie yeah. and I, that it's happens, it's amazing. But I don't find it happens a mm-hmm. lot. And that's what I get probably the most enjoyment out of. Uh, yeah, I, I could totally agree with you there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I really like the way this show is set up. I thought the writing was great. Um, this is a, an NBC show. Um, I don't know if we've ever talked about it before, but NBC, or at least publicly, but uh, NBC tends to make really good stuff. Yeah, I've they've, noticed. they've upped their game. Uh, that's like The Office. Yeah, Parks and Rec was on NBC. I think 30 Rock mm-hmm. was on NBC. Community was on NBC, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but they could be wrong that there. show over, so... Yeah, Come at me, really NBC. Yeah, well, it could be Dan Harmon's fault. It <laughs> could be Chevy Chase's fault. <laughs> kind of a fault. crazy person. could be just really anyone. Anyway. Yeah, I, I actually really think it's probably even more Chevy Chase. Just the bloopers but, uh, of Chevy Chase for that show. Have you ever seen them? It's just Chevy Chase not knowing his lines for 20 minutes. It's that, great. Oh, <laughs> God. That's so exhausting. Like, Did you ever uh, listen to the podcast that Dan Harmon did where he played some oh, of the of voicemails Chevy Chase led, left for him? It's like yeah. iconic. We've probably talked about maybe this not before. on the podcast, but we no, probably have talked that. about it. I mean, I was a big fan of Har- Dan yeah. Harmon's uh, podcast. It's just very, very long winded. I find it hard to listen to podcasts that long. Oh yeah, and he's kind of like a rambly, crazy person, so it tends to go yeah. off well, in directions. Avery, that it doesn't I hate to break it to you, to. but we are also ra- ra- but we do the same we're rambly, thing. crazy people too. <laughs> we, we do exactly the same thing. Oh my god. Except we're just, like, manic about yep. films. <laughs> so the show The Good yeah. Place uh, tells us exactly who watches The Watchmen. Um, Ooh. I don't know. Was that a joke I, or really poignant? <laughs> I have no idea. I just I, th- I thought you were going to keep going with that and you had another thing. I was, like, amping myself up for it. I guess, no. did you not? <laughs> or like, no, what? I didn't have anything. Uh, that's I'm, okay. I'm garbage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So oh this God. is kind of, an, uh, like you said, an experimental thing for us to do. Um, so I'm not really sure how we're going to proceed. Let's talk about expectations for you. Okay. Yeah, I, this is going to be like Ash grilling me for yeah. 50 more yeah. minutes. I'm no, pretty that's sure. That's exactly what that's this kind is. That's kind of what I, I thought was going to happen here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my expectations going in, um, 
I, I've already said I don't typically like TV. I, I, find, I find it difficult to focus on for that long. Um, luckily, you did a really good move, or you made a really good move, breaking this down into episode one yeah. through four and setting it up like that. I would not have been able to finish the entire season. That would have been way too much for me. I would have forgotten stuff. It would have been awkward and probably even more awkward than it already is. And uh, I'm really glad he did that for me. Uh, my expectations going in, I like watched the little like trailer bl- blurb um, that that Netflix has going. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I'm when talking you, like, about? Accidentally put your mouse um, on something for too long, and then it's like, Brr. yeah, and it's really <laughs> loud, and it's like 3:30 in the morning, and yeah, and there's like explosions, and uh, but yeah, especially this uh, show. So I, I a lot of explosions. I watched that, and yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, I watched that, and I kind of thought like. If you hadn't recommended it to me, I would never have mm-hmm. clicked on that. I would have been like, not mine. Not me at all. Um, I ended up, even like going into the first episode, I was still kind of like, okay, this is cute. Maybe not my thing. Um, I, I started to find myself invested in it, especially like into the mm-hmm. second episode. Um, I find that the concept is really, really good. And there's a lot of like places to go with it and a lot of ways to build up our main character played by Kristen mm-hmm. Bell. Uh, Eleanor, what's her last name? Eleanor, yes. Uh, Eleanor Shellstrop. That's a, that's a tongue twister if I've ever seen one. But, um, yeah. So I, I thought that that was really cool. Uh, I liked that that left, leaves that open. I like the supporting characters that were all introduced, like, really effectively Mm. as well. So, um, Chidi's your favorite. So, yeah, let's, I guess let's get into talking about, like, the, pilot so the pilots are always kind of a weird thing with network tv in my opinion and that's why this one was yeah. kind of like it was good but it definitely for me it ended on kind of a bad note with just cheesy graphics you think so um yeah those cheesy graphics it's were like cheesy. the first episode of legion it's... you know legion had like this great one hour like intro episode that ended with like the most corny just telepaths throwing human bodies that didn't look like rendered cgi like it was so bad but it ended up being a really great show and i think this this show definitely suffers the same thing um that's pretty funny i i did notice that too and i was just like yeah that looks like television graphics that's for sure so it's like you kind of got to give it the benefit of the doubt yeah you know what i mean it's just like they they have a budget and they have a time frame where they need to get these things turned around and i don't get the impression that there's going to be a lot of heavy graphics uh, through the rest of the show. I feel like they did that, and they were like, we got this to finish it off with a bang, probably. Might have been their idea. I'm not really totally sure what their th- their thoughts were. But I noticed the rest of, like, the next three episodes didn't have anything yeah. like that at yeah. the end, really. <laughs> so definitely found that to be good. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Let's talk, yeah, so the, yeah, the pilot. Well, uh, you start out with uh, Eleanor in a waiting room. Kind of sets up the, these, the, the, I think, really great, color palette of the episode or of just this i was gonna bring that up this show was so it's colorful really nice, right i love it yeah it's like pleasing it's comfortable like uh i really liked when they get to the neighborhood which so basically the concept of the show is uh eleanor's dead she's taken to this place called the good place which is religiously ambiguous which i thought was great uh so it's not just like it's not a jesus show um <laughs> Which I think is awesome. And it was just like, this is the good place. It's not heaven. It's not, you know, whatever you want to call it. And um, so I thought that that was yeah. a great move. Uh, but they, they take her to, or Michael, who uh, is like, I guess like the overseer, caretaker type dude. Yeah, so dude. he's the architect of that neighborhood. So the idea is like different right. angels architect their own neighborhoods for specific really good people and cater to exactly what that group of people would want. Uh, he's played by Ted Danson, which is like crazy. Uh, yeah. He's appara- apparently yeah. super fun. Um, I just want to point out, like, my favorite part of this episode was probably in the just when they're at the desk discussing what's going on. It's like, yeah, everyone got it about five percent right, except for like insert name. He was like a stoner in Canada in the seventies, and one day he got really high on mushrooms. Oh my god! It's so and good. like described it almost perfect. He got it like ninety two percent right, and he has the picture of him in his office. He's just like really, really yeah, lucky to have it. It's a really big deal. <laughs> it's just like okay, <laughs> he's kind of a big deal around. Here. I really hope that comes back around because I thought that was such a funny like Total line. Throwaway. Like I hope that wasn't yeah. just throwaway. Um, yeah, but um. 
So I, I really enjoyed that. Like we were saying, the color palette they bring, uh, or Michael brings Eleanor to this neighborhood, and there's all these frozen yogurt places, and the place is all colorful. It looks like this perfect little town square. Uh, and it was it was it really cute. Like, uh, did you ever watch idea. any Pushing Daisies? Was, no, I never saw like a, that either. I, yeah, I haven't seen like much a, TV, man. It was I a TV show honest, by yeah. Tim Burton. It had like this really bright color palette. I think that's the name of the show. I didn't really like it. It was super bad. And I tried to get me to love it, but I was like, but it was like, sorry, I'm not yeah. that emo. Um, but, <laughs> I don't like every. I don't <laughs> perpetually suck Tim Burton's dick because he's a lunatic. I'm um, oh. sorry. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> So, um, like, throughout this pilot, uh, she's led through the town and everything's, like, revealed to you how this neighborhood works and how the, this, the good place works. Uh, and then Eleanor's taken to, like, her what's supposed to be her house. And Michael's like, we have this for you because you love clowns, remember? And here's your screen. You can go through point of view of uh, everything you've ever done in your whole life. Like, here's you doing uh, human rights uh, mission in like wherever it was, it was like Kuwait or something like I that. I can't remember it. where it was. Yeah, but um, and then uh, she talks to oh, and she's introduced to the man who's supposed to be her soulmate because everybody has a soulmate in this neighborhood, and his name is Chidi. I I don't even want to Chidi Anaganye is I think that's he's a sh- yeah, and uh, he's played by William Jackson yeah, Harper. I haven't seen anything, and but he's really good in this show. Neither yeah. have I. Yeah, yeah he's great. Um, and basically, Eleanor spills her guts and says, I'm the wrong person. This isn't my stuff. I'm not supposed to be here. Um, they got my name right, but that's about it. <laughs> so it's pretty interesting. Like, uh, oh, that's classic Arizona you. trash. That everyone knows one person from Arizona that's kind of just a garbage person. That's Eleanor. Yeah, classic. You hear that, Arizona? <laughs> yeah, what? fight me, Arizona. You're on our list. You're on a shit list yeah. of states. You're up there with Oklahoma yeah. and Ohio. That's why we probably. didn't run for comptroller in your state. Yeah, we ran for Wyoming yeah, instead. A superior state. Oh, that just doesn't feel right. That feels bad. Ooh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't feel good. No. We're one of four. Pe- we're we're two of four people that live in Wyoming. Yeah. There's like nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, I mean, like I I apologize for being offensive to the people of Wyoming, but nobody's there to hear it. <laughs> Have you ever, uh, do you know anyone so, who's ever been to Wyoming? I don't either. Prove to me that it's real. I've been to Wyoming. Wait, what? Uh, prove to you, I've been to Wyoming. Yeah, <laughs> It's real. God I swear to God. I see where you're going with this. <laughs> my favorite thing is, is like people who are big conspiracy theory people. I have my friend Spencer, who's been on the show in the past, one point he's like, come on, man. Like, What's the biggest conspiracy theory? theory you believe in i'm like like i've never met anyone who's been to iraq and i'm kind of convinced we're fighting a war in a place that doesn't really exist and he's like so you don't believe in any conspiracy theories except for the biggest one I'm like yeah yeah and that kind of i got to <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> so <laughs> what conspiracy theories do you believe in it's just like they're all i don't know that's silly to me I, I like you a lot. Uh, I like you a lot, Spencer. That's silly. That's conspiracy theories. I think people just want to like have like they want to one up everyone and, yeah, be, like, the, and like feel like yeah, they know a, more. I want to be a special know? person. That's what conspiracy theories are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, don't you know? Open your eyes, man. Be as smart as I am right now. It's like, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> like, okay. It must be an exhausting yeah. way to live. It, it must be. Like, like really wanting to find. I'm tired just thinking yeah. about it. But um. um so yeah, we have, uh, they introduce each other, she sp- spills her guts, and then later that night they go to a party at their neighbor's house, their neighbor who has like a ridiculous CGI mansion. Um, yeah, it's absurd. And she li- and her neighbor lives yeah. right next door to, to Eleanor's tiny house, and she keeps bringing it up, because she's actually kind of a dickhead. And she's like, why don't I get a big fucking house? <laughs> like. Yeah, and keeps conflating about it, and yeah, even though she's like in the good place, like by yeah. mistake, and she should, probably shouldn't be yeah, complaining seriously. about it. Um, yeah. And you're introduced to Janet, who is basically like the AI for the area, and anytime you ask for her, she'll like appear, and she knows everything, and it's real weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's great. She knows all sorts of like really 
like like very very tiny details about everybody and and everything. I really like her antics with Michael in a later episode where he's like trying to reprogram her to like be more hip and stuff. Yeah. So you like I I, that's interesting. Yeah, she's like, a fun like, character. I, I asked her to be more more friendly, but she's gone into overt sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, Stan, what's up? <laughs> it's so good. She is a great character, and, and also the uh, line that, of course, is a Portlander I love, uh, which is she starts doing fun facts as one of them, and she goes, uh, "Yeah, I could." Chidi goes, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I could be a trailblazer," and she just appears and she goes, "Fun fact: all members of the Portland Trailblazers are in the bad place." <laughs> Thank you, Janet. <laughs> Fun fact, Janet is me. Like, just so many good lines. Um, I, I like um, Janet has another good one where uh, Chidi and Eleanor are, like, trying to figure out, like, if the bad place is even that bad. So they bring Janet up and they're like, so what can you tell us about the bad place? And she says, oh, unfortunately, that's the one thing I can't tell you anything about. All I can play for you is this clip and like this audio clip. And it's like the people screaming and like explosions and fire in the background. Yeah, Because that's what the bad place is like. They're like, oh, God, help me. It's great. <laughs> And the and Eleanor and Chidi were like, maybe it's really not that bad. <laughs> maybe it's just like not as good. Oh <laughs> like Cincinnati, the medium, yeah, the medium place. place, Cincinnati. <laughs> I think that everyone's a medium person who just live in Cincinnati. Just go to Cincinnati. Yeah. That's great. Um, um, so, and then we meet hmm. um, Jamila Jamil's character, Tahani El Jamil, which is very confusing. Uh, because yes. the actress is Jamila Jamil, who's an <laughs> awesome lady. Uh, fun fact about her, including someone she had to kiss on set at one point, she's kissed a total of seven people, which is the most unbelievable fact I've ever heard in my life. Uh, like yeah. in her life? You saw how gorgeous she is, right? Where did you, where are you uh, getting this information? Because I heard her on a podcast. Talk about it. Just seven yeah. people? Maybe like interesting i don't know i don't she know if apparently, i really uh well she's like a big anti yeah, anti-anorexia too. person because she had anorexia for a long time she was oh, in okay. the modeling world for obvious reasons uh yeah because she's five ten and a half i'm looking at right now jesus christ she's next tall. to Kristen bell who's like five negative five feet tall yeah two or something yeah Kristen bell is so That's tiny funny. it's actually kind of fucking adorable i think Kristen bell's adorable how tall is she? Oh Let's God. see. See full bio. Five foot one. Avery, I can see your screen, Holy dude. Crap. You're looking up what her feet look like. This is this is not okay. That's not on our IMDb. Yeah, it's on, uh, what's the name of that <laughs> website that I always hear? Don't fucking dox me on my own podcast. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, what is it? Footopedia? <laughs> Footopedia? <laughs> Wicca, wait, wait, wait. It's Wicca Wicca pe- Pedestrian? A it's definitely Wikipedia. It's definitely could, wiki feet. Yep, pediatric. It's wiki feet. <laughs> wiki feet. Oh, on, on wiki feet. Is yep. that really a and thing? Are a you kidding? Poll. Does your significant other know that you like feet? And fifty-three point four percent of people keep it to themselves. Huh, no and they shit. have a feet no of the figure. week. A foot of the week. Oh no my shit. god! This is. Oh, I feel. I feel gross. Okay. I'm, I, I, got, I got it. Oh no! Is it worse than you thought? I got off the page. <laughs> were they advertising the vajankle? Oh Remember when we did that? I wish. I wish they were. We were trying to get sponsored by the yeah, vajankle. Never... <laughs> All I got was a restraining uh, order. Back in the porn corner days. Yeah, right. Huh? I advertised the vajankle, and all I got was this stupid yeah. T-shirt <laughs> and a restraining order. Oh my god. Uh... Yep. Rest in peace for the porn story. Uh, oh, it's well. all right. It'll be okay. <laughs> um, so moving on through the series, a couple other things happened. I got to be honest, at this point after the pilot, I was kind of into it and like all the episodes kind of yeah. blurred together. I had to stop myself at episode four because I was, I was like almost into episode <laughs> five. And I was just like, oh, wait, I, it's time to be done now. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you might have to help me break stuff down. So- I think in the second episode there, that is the second episode, the one where she's trying to figure out if um, 
Oh, what's oh my god, what's her name now? Uh, not ta- no, it's not the Tahani episode. It's the one where uh, Chidi's trying to decide whether or not uh, he wants to help her. Because Chidi is a, a professor right. of ethics, and so she thinks that maybe yes. if she can stop trying to fake being a good person, actually become one, she can earn her place up there. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's great. Um, I think that this is it sets up the a really good arc for Eleanor's character that I'm sure is still going. That's like the whole purpose of the show yeah. at this point is like Chidi's tell, teaching her how to be an ethical person and Eleanor is slowly becoming more ethical and learning new things. Uh, comedy yeah. ensues. That's <laughs> kind of the basis of the show. Um, but yeah, in this episode, yeah. it's basically surrounding that. Not honestly, not my favorite episode, but it does have like some good moments with uh, Tahani and Zhang Yu, who is her silent soulmate uh who's a, a buddhist monk and it, you can or so you or think or so you think uh i didn't exactly. want to get up to that episode for you because i thought you'd love that character uh yeah i yeah i'm going i want to talk about that episode that's the last one i watched so it's also the freshest in my brain but um yeah and so, so basically, Chidi's trying to help Eleanor do all of these things to become more moral, more mm-hmm. ethical. Um, and that's pretty much that whole episode. Does anything like really of note happen? I can't really. Even basically, she now. has to decide. So <laughs> she has to decide whether she's going to help pick up the trash that fell because at the end of the first episode, like the world explodes because she's an asshole. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and like because one of the cogs is out of place, it kind of knocks the whole balance of this neighborhood yeah. out of place. So she's so she has to be a good person, or the world's gonna yeah, explode. And they're gonna find whatever. it. They're gonna figure yeah. it out. Um, so she has to decide yeah. between helping clean up trash from that and flying, uh, and she chooses it kind of selfishly, um, and then you know tries to rush through it at the end, and then more stuff happens, and people almost get hurt, except they can't. So they're all dead. Um, yeah, because they're basically in the afterlife. Yeah. So it's like, it's like they're already and, done. Uh, yeah. Chidi says he's not going to help her, but then she tries to clean up everything at night by herself without him knowing, and he finds out, and he's like, "This is a good thing that you're doing because you're not doing it for yourself. You're just doing it." Uh, and. He, and then she almost gets caught because she almost gets like knocked yeah, on because she was going to like put it in somebody's yard yeah. or something. Um, and then, yeah. yeah, so he's agreed to help her. And then that goes into the third episode where he she starts learning. Um, yeah. Which is great. And the third episode is the one where it's like right at the beginning she's learning stuff and she's really on to Tahani because Tahani buys her like like a plant Right? And the plant, like, every time she's mean to Tahani, the plant will, like, die or, like, catch on fire yeah. or something. Um, yeah. And and Eleanor thinks that this is just purely, like, an asshole mm-hmm. move. Like, she's just sarcastically giving her a plant. And um, and Chidi's like, no, I pre- I'm pretty sure she's just being nice. Like, you're her neighbor. She's just being nice to you. And Eleanor's like, I don't fucking believe that shit. I don't fucking believe that shit. Yeah. And, yeah, we haven't even and talked so, about the uh, greatness of like not being able to swear on network TV or in heaven, mm-hmm. and so they use shirt, fork, and all that. Yeah, it's like it's pretty that. good. It's a good like workaround because it's almost like they can say that kind of stuff without actually mm-hmm. saying it. It's yeah. kind of cool because you know what like, and they say like ash yeah. hole or something. Yeah, yeah, which is actually your, yeah, your name. So that's my whole name, <laughs> ash hole. Um, God damn it. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I love that as a workaround just for the, the TV part. But, um, yeah, cause also Eleanor's kind of on edge at this point cause she just got at the end of the second episode, a note slipped under her door that said, you don't belong here. Um, so she, because of an event that happened in the first episode, which we'll yeah, come back that around comes to up in the fourth episode, huh. which is a serialized TV. Um, so she kind of tries to spend time with Tahani to figure out if she's the real deal. Um, and she is. <laughs> and from what she can gather, she pretty much is, right? That's the impression that I get. It's like every time Eleanor tries to, like, get her on something, like, ha, you're actually an asshole. Uh, she's always coming back around, and it turns out she's really just nice. Um, and then at the end of the episode, Eleanor finally is just, like, out of options and steals the honey's diary or her journal. Yeah. And Chidi's like, this is like the worst thing. You can't do this at all. This is super <laughs> net ethical. That is the worst thing you could be doing. Yeah. 
So and, uh, yeah. And how does so, that end? She ends up giving it back without she reading finds, it, right? Yeah. You know, Tahani crying because she just can't connect with Chiang Yu because he refuses to talk. Um, yeah. And it ends with the the reveal that that well he mm. can talk, and it, that's how it leads into the next episode. Yeah, which is really interesting. And he was the one that um, so yeah, episode he was four the one that slipped it under her door the note. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was the one who slipped the no- the note saying you don't belong here under. Her door. So the next episode, they talk about they they're talking to, to uh, Jianyu. Yeah, Is that, I'm Jianyu. saying it right. I keep fucking uh, gotcha. And uh, he's saying like it, because Eleanor's like, how did you even know that I also also was a mistake? Because he himself was a mistake. He shouldn't be there either. He's actually like a drug dealer and like a DJ and like kind of like a shady person from like Miami or something. Florida. And Jack, yeah, Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, so he's saying, like, you told me well, the first night at the party in episode one. You told me, basically, is what he's saying, <laughs> that you don't belong here. And because I think Eleanor said something like, like, she was like, well, here's a secret you can't tell anyone since you can't talk. I don't belong here. And like, <laughs> which is like great because she's such an asshole. And it's yeah, it's so funny. And uh, yeah. So they kind of get to like a bit of his past in this fourth, fourth yeah, they episode. Yeah, I think they used oh. cutaway like stuff pretty well. Like they, especially like yeah, just like they do for Eleanor's yeah. life too, because they're they're doing that kind of yeah. thing as well. Um, yeah, I mean, like they have he has so many great moments just because he is the comic foil. He's just the dumb character. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Jason is, which is Jianyu's yeah. full Jason, name is Jason, yeah, Jason Mendoza. Mendoza. He's not even Tibetan. Uh-huh. Uh, he's Filipino. He's from, and, and he's from Florida. Heaven's so racist. <laughs> Such a good line. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this this fourth episode really hammered it in. I'm definitely enjoying yeah. this show. I think uh, I think like the the main cast of characters, like the main crew, because it's kind of obvious to me that these three characters, Chidi, Eleanor, and Jason Mendoza, are all going to be like. And probably eventually Tahani are going to be like the main core. You don't think Michael? I'm suspicious. Uh, I'm suspicious about Michael. There's something up Why? with him. Because he likes suspenders. I like suspenders, Avery. That's not what it is. It's just like he'll he'll like do things where I, like there's a scene where he he's just like everything's coming apart at the seams. Like whose dog is that? Whose dog is that? And he goes and kicks the dog, and it like goes into the sun. And then, uh, and then he has to go and explain to the girl who that like who owned the dog when he realizes he made a mistake. That it's just like it's really not a real dog. It's just a construct of a dog. Like, it doesn't really love you. <laughs> and like it seems like he's very impartial to these people mm-hmm. here. And it's interesting. And I, I wonder if it's like selfish motivations are gonna come in the way, or if he's truly just an altruistic yeah, person. Yeah, just maybe doesn't get can't humans tell just he's yet. not one. Yeah, that could be it too. He just doesn't understand him. And that could be an interesting arc for him yeah. as well. So that'll be cool to see going yeah, forward. I definitely think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if there are any other really great highlights. Uh, oh, uh, the the bud hole joke. <laughs> <laughs> How Jason takes him to like his little hangout yeah. room, <laughs> and he's just like, "You should see my bud hole," or something. And Eleanor's like, "What?" Yeah, we can go hang out my butt. Like, it's my hole where the buds <laughs> hang out. <laughs> He's just That's tone deaf. One. It's so great. Um, yeah, it's just totally tone deaf. He's a great character. that whole episode centers around, like, Tahani's helping this woman who, like, always sounds mad but is very positive open a restaurant. And yeah. uh, that's that's a great bit, too. So like, change the floor plan at the last minute? I would love to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So and, good. you know, Jason almost outs himself because, you know, as you learn from his backstory, he always tries to hide who he is from when he was pretending to be Acid Cat, uh, their dead mouse ripoff. Um, yeah, Acid <laughs> Cat. I love that. And so he's trying to, to out himself. <laughs> and the episode ends with, you know, uh, what's her face? Eleanor putting her hand through a cake and creating a giant hole in the world. So. Uh, so it's going to pick up with episode yeah, five. Which I might throw on right after this. I don't know. 
I'm kind of thinking right. about it. I've got a couple hours before work, so we'll end up seeing. <laughs> little binge. It's always yeah. good. Um, yeah. Do some binge. Binge yeah. work. Um, so I guess should we get into uh, – well, what negatives – I know you're saying you're having a hard time with negatives because it's a TV show. Yeah. It's it's actually a good point. Um, I It's the only real negative that I can have like from a technical standpoint – would be what we already talked about with like the kind of cheesy mm-hmm. graphics at the end mm-hmm. of the pilot. And that kind of even gets a pass on its own because it is the pilot and it's not really indicative of the entire right. show. Um, so that's kind of even hard to call that a con on its own, although technically I guess it is. So that's really what, uh, yeah, I suppose like the only real thing, despite the fact that I am enjoying it, this isn't normally the kind of show I yeah. would watch. Um, but that's just like a subjective thing. And I mean, like now that I'm starting, excuse me, now that I'm starting to like learn who the characters are and like see like perhaps some background motivations and people are coming out of the woodwork in realer ways, I'm starting to enjoy it. Um, so probably I'll end up liking it more as I watch the show and get a little bit more okay. invested. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, I seem to be liking it. It's kind of hard to come up with cons. I don't know if I mean, you have I don't anything think it's, in mind. It's not like... I'm 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 struggling. This is one of my favorite TV shows that's on right now, so it's really hard. Um, but I will say, like, it's not shot in a super exciting way. Um, no, it's not. That's it, a good point. You know, yeah, it's, it's even hard to call that a con because it's not like it's shot in a, in a bad no. way. It's just not inspired camera angles. But it's also again a TV show, so it's just like they're they have like a deadline and a, like a turnaround time that they have to do for this kind of stuff. Unless they're and they're also shooting versus like a movie where you're shooting for two hours of material at usually at most they're shooting for more like eleven hours of material so it's like they really want to turn and burn through this so it's kind of hard to even call that a knock yeah. you know they could have done, done more, with it. more with it I think that um, while everyone does like a pretty good job I think that like facial expression wise like maybe it's like. Uh, Kristen Bell and Chidi do the most like of that kind of acting. It's really you know it's yeah. a, it's a classic TV show in that it's a joke fest. You know they're just trying to th- oh yeah you know, completely joke per minute you to death, um, which I think they have some of the best jokes in the game right now. You know Joe Mandy, uh, you know, and what's his face uh, Michael Schur. Like they're both that's what they do. They're SNL guys. They're Parks yeah, and Rec we- guys. They're all those people. We were talking about their previous uh, qualifications or their their previous like their resumes basically before we uh, we uh, moved on to this. We started recording, but yeah, they are writers on The Office. I think you said Parks and Recreation already, but they've been around for NBC for a while, so it clear it seems like they've been working on this kind of thing, and this is what they do. But it is it is that joke per minute formula, or you know because they want to fit as many as they can in before the commercial breaks. So you want to come back when the commercials are over. Yeah. That's another thing that I'm not crazy about when it comes to television is that it's there to sell you stuff. Um, but I mean, like when you're watching it on something like Netflix, that kind of falls away, you know, because you're not being subjected to constant advertisement. Yeah, that's true. And um, like, it's not really a product placey TV show like other TV shows can be. Yeah, I haven't seen any. Yeah, there, there weren't any that stood out to me. Do- and that's the only time is it bothers me is when it yeah. stands out. So. Like, uh, what is it? Um, the Fast and Furious movies with, like, what is it, Dos Equis or, or Corona? Corona. Right? It's Corona. Dos Equis yeah. would be better. You can have any beer you want as long as and it's as a Corona. As, the, um, as the label's facing outwards. Hey, yeah. It's fucking let's, stupid. Let's make this, <laughs> Those let's make this Transformers movie 20 minutes longer by showing all of the cars like logos exactly. for 10 seconds each exactly. each time they're on screen they'll be great <laughs> um yeah that and i think uh sony has a big problem i mean like obviously it's they're marketing sony products but what they'll do is they'll they'll have like every character uses a sony ericsson phone and every character uses a sony vio laptop and it's really obnoxious because nobody uses those in real life <laughs> so it's like oh my god here we go that's a big problem with adam sandler movies too but he's a fucking hack yeah i'm really so. scared to watch his stand-up on netflix that just came out i saw him I don't do know, a live man. set and at one point he was making jokes about the days of the week looking like my neighbor's dad on a day off like just sweatshirt and shorts me and 
And oh my it, god, like, dude. Who decided that Monday was like the one that was gonna get shit on? I'm like, this is the worst thing on the planet. That's really bad. Were people no, laughing or like, like half of that audience yeah. was sad they didn't get into a hip hop show at the other room. Yeah. Damn, dude, that's bad. It's it's like the thing is, is like I want to feel bad for him, but I know he's been conning like Sony for years and has millions and millions of like dollars. Pixel? He probably just hates himself, and yeah, Pixels is bad, dude. But like, <laughs> and I think he just hates himself and like just has all this money, so he just does whatever he wants and like shits on other people. That's like my impression with Adam Sandler. He needs to go so. into the the comedy music game. That's like the height of his talent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's when he was actually kind of funny yeah. and cute when he was younger and he wasn't a creepy old dude who just like wanted money. Yeah. I can see him singing so. a song and saying the word pussy too much in it. it could- yeah, totally. Or like, I don't know, a big thing, like a big problem I, I honestly have with him and I think a lot of people do now and it wasn't so apparent like in the 90s when it wasn't like you didn't notice these things as much as you do nowadays. It's just every single joke that he has is like at the expense of someone who isn't him. So it's like, he'll make fun of little old ladies, or he'll make fun of Mexican people, or he'll make fun of black people, or he'll make fun of, like, even Jewish people, and he's Jewish. It's just like, everybody who isn't him, isn't him exactly, and his whole joke is that he just yells at them. He's just screaming he's angrily. Not, he's not even a funny yell. And it's yell. lazy. Like, some it's, people have a funny yeah. yell. It's like, kind of like a scary, like, I'm concerned for you kind of yell. And... You know, it's it's like it's pretty sad and it's pretty lazy that he has to make jokes at the expense of other people. And I think he probably got that criticism and now all of his material, all he's got that isn't at the expense of someone else is making jokes about the days of the yeah. week, which is yikes. <laughs> That's bad. I mean, so what are you going to do? I mean, I feel bad for him because he was considered such a talent, but it's like you got to adapt and there's a lot to make fun of when I think he didn't when, when want to when you're Adam Sandler yeah. you can make fun of yourself and everyone would fucking love it if he made fun of himself on stage that's what he should do at this yeah. point because like his he's like kind of reached a, a really low mm-hmm. point if he starts if he turns it around and makes it self-deprecating first of all he's probably gonna get some of that like hatred for himself yeah. out you know and people will probably identify with it because people don't like him but if it brings publicity then maybe it'll start bringing you back around uh, yeah, that's what I think at least thank you guys for joining but, us here on Sandler Talk uh, the only podcast yeah, that, Sandler Talk. that tells Adam Sandler how to live his life and live his fucking <laughs> life yeah <laughs> maybe this will get around to him and he'll be like fuck you and that's what he'll say to us uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be and, like, we've and, heard and be that joke. joke. Boo. And he'll he'll make like a, a podcast about like or no, he won't make a podcast, but he'll have a stand up bit about how he makes fun of podcasts. He'll be like, What are these guys? Twenty five? Ever no one'll laugh. Like nobody's laughing right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just tan- channeling Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. We, we are twenty five. Uh and nerdy. Ooh, my what are you going to do about so it? so dirty right now. <laughs> oh, my glasses. My glasses. <laughs> <laughs> my glasses. I can't see without them. That was me on Halloween. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Halloween, how was your Halloween? Uh, I, now that we, we kind of talked about what we could with the Yeah, I the did show. leg day. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I worked out too, and I worked, yeah. and that's it. Um, so I've been saving this little treat for myself since Halloween. Buddy of mine gave me a sour apple warhead. Mm. Thought it might be interesting to open that up and you can hear my reaction on the air to something extremely right, sour. And I'm gonna ask you questions right. uh, for our wrapping up the show while you have it in your mouth. Okay, while, while I have it in my mouth? Okay, I'm unpeeling it. Oh my God, my mouth is like scared already. It's like watering. <laughs> Are you yeah. ready? Are you ready? All right, we're gonna start this lightning round in three, two, one. Who's your least favorite actor on the show? Oh my god, um, yeah, maybe. Oh, it's definitely not Tim Danton. (laughs) Oh my fucking god, I'm gonna say that's a tough call. I really like everyone. If I had to pick 
probably the guy who plays Jason. Okay. But just by default, I think he's really good. <laughs> All right. Use crisis How do you think hour. the season will end? Oh, with a, something revealed about Michael. Okay, that's fake. No, it's not fake. I just think that that's how it'll end. Okay. Uh, how many seasons do you think this show oh will last? Oh, my God. Um, it's on three right mm-hmm. now, right? Okay, all the sour stuff's gone. Whew. God damn. Um, how do I think it'll end? Um... Oh, how many seasons? Uh, hmm. It's on three now. I'm gonna say probably like a couple more. It'll probably get to five. Oh, I, I don't. I don't five want or it six. To. I want it to hit four and end. Yeah. Oh, really? I don't know what the quality of three is at this point, so I mean, it's kind of hard to say. Quality. It's more just like I like shows that don't last a long time. Mm. My favorite show ever has three seasons and it's perfect. See, I feel like that's a good yeah. amount. Once you get to like season three, it's like. You gotta kind of cut it off there because four isn't gonna have. It's like you got through those like main arcs, yeah. you know. So now you gotta like bring stuff around. That's like like what happened with like The Walking Dead is a great example of a show that has been going way too fucking long. I had a pretty good first season. Um, I don't think people like the second season, but I ended up liking it. And then after that, it's like, oh man, this is still going. And now it's like, oh man, this is still going. Yeah, it's still going. Is it, are they on the last season yet? I have no idea. I feel like they call it something different now. They call it like Fear of the Walking Dead. They don't call it like unless that's a spinoff the, uh, show. The Power Walking Dead or the uh, Brisk Jog Dead. <laughs> Guys, I'm here to Fear the Jogging I'm, I'm here Dead. Till bread. <laughs> that that's like the sequel, the spinoff show, The Jogging Dead. <laughs> the Jogging. Dead. And then there's the Sprinting Dead. Yeah. And then there's the uh, oh shit, the zombies learned how to drive. Uh, which is my favorite show. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> I hope it goes yeah, in that direction. Um, okay. Uh, let's get into, I guess, rating? Yeah, let's give it a rating. I don't want to give this five words until I see the whole thing. But I do want to give it like my impression rating right off the bat, since it's kind of part of what we do. Okay. You know? Um... I'm going to say it surpassed my expectations. I thought it wasn't going to be my thing at all. Turns out it's not really the kind of show I would normally watch, but I'm enjoying it anyway, which means that it's good, and the writing is good. I'm going to give this show a solid 7.5. Honestly, that could change in the future as I watch more of the show. Um, But for right now, it seems to be hitting pretty much everything I like. Um, It's just... TV in general doesn't f- kind of fails to capture my interest after a certain amount of time. So I'm going to give it a neutral rating for right now. That's 7.5. Finish up season one and then come back to it and see how we okay. think after that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if I had five words, it's like, Hemp is so racist. That's four words. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Heaven is so racist. This is five. <laughs> probably my favorite comedy show on TV right now. I really hate a lot of comedy shows. Um, very, you know, gimmicky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I give it a nine from my personal perspective because I don't see. Oh, it's yeah. just a very unique concept, and I like the ensemble. It is unique. Um, yeah. And also, I know someone who does like the body double for Janet. Uh, Wait, yeah, really? <laughs> she does yoga with my mom. <laughs> Isn't that's that cool. weird? Uh, so yeah. that's cool. Uh, I, it, it gets a criminally small amount of Emmy nominations. I think it only has two, which is crazy. Yeah, maybe it'll come back yeah, around. Or maybe they'll just keep throwing them at Modern Family till we all throw up. Fuck you, Modern yeah, Family. maybe. It could be a two. What's wrong with Modern Family? I, I don't know. I've never even watched that show. You can't. I, I don't even know. Talk. It is the most... Who? What's the name of the guy? Well, number one, uh, I'm sorry, but someone having an accent isn't a joke, Modern Family. That's de- oh yikes, That's a yeah. terrible joke. I don't care if Sofia Vergara is pretty enough that she'll be okay. Uh, it's not great. Mm-hmm. Ty Burrell, just get, her out of, get him out of my life. Uh, children actors make me physically ill. Yeah, for yeah. everybody. Too That's many fucking point. characters for a good ensemble cast. Why yeah. do you have 10 seasons of any television program? My favorite show that needs more Emmy nominations is Ghost Adventures. 
<laughs> Big fan of the Kroll show. That's my favorite show of all time. I like Ghost Adventures. <laughs> it sounds so bad, dude. <laughs> dude, it's really bad. It's on the Travel oh my Channel. God. Um, yeah, so basically it's this guy's name is Zach Baggins. And he gets, like, his buddies together, and they have all this ghost hunting equipment. Okay. And this is real. It's not, like, it's not, well. like, I mean, the ghosts aren't real, but you know what I mean. Like, they, they're really, it's supposed to be a reality show. Oh. And uh, they go, and they, like, talk to him and stuff in, like, these abandoned buildings. And uh, and Zach Baggins, like, the host, like, always gets possessed. It's so <laughs> stupid. It's really, really dumb. It's, like, you, like. Have you, you've probably heard of this, but probably anyway, you've told it's all me. fucking fake, and they're like crazy people. Well, you know, yeah, <laughs> and it has sixteen seasons. Oh my god, shoot me! I hate yeah. things that go too long. Yeah. Even like Thirty Rock, one of my favorite shows. I'm like, dude, why do you have this many seasons? And Friends, which was yeah, that's that's which doesn't yeah. hold up. Uh, I don't like Friends at Friends all. Friends was okay when I was like eight or nine, and now I'm like, yeah. oh, Chandler's very homophobic. Yeah. That's a weird. Really, yeah. Ross is your funny character. Ross Schwimmer, David Schwimmer. He's your funny character. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, not into it. I hate but, everything. Um, all right. <laughs> hey, so that's how, what we think about the Good Place. Adam Sandler, Ghost Adventures. We talked about some other stuff yeah. too. Oh, uh, <laughs> do what I um, did. Uh, right after you are studying for your exams to get your MBA. Uh, Watch like two hours of documentaries about Rumspringa. That was a fun morning for me. That's what I did this okay. morning. <laughs> <laughs> I studied for the GMAT yeah, okay. and then watched a documentary about Rumspringa. Uh, productive morning, yeah, of course. I'm still, I'm still eating this sour yeah. thing. Is it sour? Mm-hmm. Not anymore. It's gone. Yeah. gone. You were making a real big fuss about it when you put it in your mouth, like. Oh my god, it was really sour at the beginning, but the, all the sour stuff wore, wore off like really yeah. quick. Okay. Uh, what are we doing next yeah. week, Avery? We are watching and then reviewing the film Mystery, Mystery Men. Mystery Men. Came out in 1999. It was like a Nickelodeon original picture, I think. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, dude. It's I'm I'm pretty excited to talk about it. It's really kind of stupid. Um, I always have always thought it was pretty funny, and it's always kind of held a special place oh, in my heart. God. I saw it in the theaters with my parents. Yeah, man, it's pretty oh, goofy. God. And then I guess we'll do Crimes uh-huh. of Grindelwald after that. I, I'm realizing now. I re-listened to our to our uh, episode where we talked about what we were doing for the month, and you were counting things from Thursday, not from Tuesday. When we actually release the show. Really? So we don't have five weeks. We have four. Uh, so I guess we'll push The Man from Earth till December. <laughs> oh, shit. You're right. I was counting things from yeah. Thursday. Are That's you sure? That's the only way that we'd have a show on the first. Unless I was looking at... I was probably looking at the uh, the month of October. Yeah, I must have been. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll do <laughs> That's pretty funny. Man, I was definitely looking Crimes at Crimes of Grindelwald, yeah. and then we'll start off December with, uh, before all the good movies come out around Christmas with uh, The Man from Earth. Uh, yeah, sounds yeah. good. All right. Anything else you want to cool. plug? Uh, no, I think that's going to be it. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't have anything uh, else. Go and uh, check out our yeah. Instagram. We're uh, at For the Story Podcast. Um, we post if stuff you, there. Uh, if you sweat a lot and your and boss stuff. gets mad at you, uh, Botox uh, in your armpits will stop you from sweating. Yeah. Also, shape your armpits regularly for maximum aerodynamics. Don't forget yep. to do that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, go Blazers. Uh, they lost to the Lakers last night, and I am emotionally devastated. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, hi, Mom. Uh, hi, Dad. Just going to shout out my mom. <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, I'm yeah. done. <laughs> all right, I guess we'll, we'll all see right, you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Love you. Bye. Bye.